What's up everybody, I'm Kirk, welcome back to the channel. Chains of Fury is an upcoming Metroidvania boomer shooter, a graphic novel inspired romp full of graphic visuals, destructible environments, and a one-eyed, bald-headed, mustachioed protagonist with a lot of rage. This one has been on my radar for a bit now, and recently a fresh demo was slapped onto Steam to promote the launch of the game's Kickstarter. And I figured now was the perfect time to take a peek and offer my initial thoughts. But before all that, if you're new here and you're digging what you're seeing, please consider liking and subscribing to help support this channel. Alrighty, let's get kicking. Chains of Fury is being developed by Cobble Games and published by Gaming Factory SA. You play as a big bad mercenary who's been betrayed by his clients and locked in a maximum security prison. And you guessed it, the story revolves around this crazed chrome dome breaking out and wreaking all sorts of havoc. As the developers describe him, he's the meanest bastard this earth has ever carried, whose testosterone can only be measured in the amounts of bullets you share with those standing in your way. <laughs> yeah, he sounds like a real treat. I like how his character portrait is the one telling you when you've done stuff, because I kept imagining what he'd sound like saying it. Scrap metal found. Shotgun shells found. Full health. No need to heal. <laughs> yep, that's how I entertain myself. Featured in this demo is the beginning prison area, which leads to a mining tunnel. It's a very short demo, offering just a taste of what's to come, but there is a lot here to chew on. Like many titles in the ravenous boomshoot subgenre, Chains takes much inspiration from old school shooters of the 90s and is not shy about showing it. Oh hey there, Duke. How's it going? As expected, this is a fairly kinetic shooter with some hard hitting action. And from the little taste this demo offers, I'm happy to say the base shooting mechanics so far feel pretty solid. <laughs> Along with your fists and feet, which we'll discuss more in a bit, you are granted a meaty double barrel shotgun with the kind of oomph that would make the Slayer nod slightly with approval. Although the shotgun is surprisingly generous in terms of range, you can take enemies out from a pretty comfortable distance, the trade-off being a narrow weapon spread. Not sure if that's enough to really balance this thing out, but honestly, I don't wanna get too judgy before I see the final product. If the shotgun doesn't blow you through the back of your seat, worry not. Chains has quite the arsenal planned for the full release, with staples like a chain gun, flamethrower, and crossbow, along with more unique fare like a saw gun and electric gun. During combat, you can also activate rage mode, done by filling up your rage meter by getting kills. When activated, your screen goes a deep shade of red and time slows down, letting you decimate baddies like you've seen the Matrix code. At the moment, I'm a little indifferent on this ability only because the enemy Enemies featured in the demo are not terribly hard to kill, and despite time slowing down, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of added advantage to rage mode. Although I'm sure its uses will be more pronounced in the full version. Now while Chain's core gameplay pays tribute to retro shooter classics, it does set itself apart in three key ways. Its art style, its environments, and structure. Chains is a game that looks as though it leapt off the pages of an indie graphic novel, and the devs have stated the look is inspired by Hellboy, Lobo, 13, and Void Bastards. Oh yeah, definitely Void Bastards. I dig the art. The line work is mostly sharp and clean with a lot of personality, and the colors, while simple, are bright and effective. The enemy designs are also a trip. Space goblins and spacesuits and big leather pigs who want to make you squeal. And the death animations are wicked, certainly animated in the vein of Doom 93, where when the enemies die, their bodies tear apart and mutilate before you. I'm glad more retro shooters are taking the hand-drawn approach, as I think the art style fits comfortably with this sort of game. Chains of Fury features highly destructible levels. With your big burly fists, you can punch through walls or blow them apart with your shotgun. And in the beginning prison area, just about every wall that isn't reinforced can be destroyed, allowing you to chart your own path, ambush enemies, and of course, stumble upon some secrets. And with your big burly feet, you can kick doors off their hinges to very deadly effect, as well as kick enemies into spiked wall traps. 
It kind of reminds me of Red Faction, but mixed with Bulletstorm, adding some nice dimension to the game. And I can't help but wonder how much further the environmental stuff will be pushed for the final version. Are there going to be enemies that can use it against you? Are there specific types that can only be damaged by the environment? Will there be more traps featured? And will the player be able to bypass whole sections through clever destruction? There's a lot of stuff this game wants to accomplish, but this is one area I hope the developer iterates on extensively, because it could be the thing that really helps chains stick out from the pack. Chains of Fury is described as a Metroidvania experience. Sadly though, there wasn't much in this short demo to represent it, other than one inaccessible area that requires a biosuit. Either way, this prospect still excites me. As many of you know, I love first-person shooters, but I also adore Metroidvanias, and it's kind of a bummer we haven't received more first-person Metroidvanias in the past, as there have been some fantastic examples of it. Shout out to Metroid Prime, Savage Planet, and Power Slave the console version. Chains also seems to have a toe in roguelikes as well. Once again, this aspect is not well represented in the current demo, but as detailed on the Kickstarter, the core loop will involve choosing a loadout, commencing your mission, and if killed, you'll have to start over at the beginning of your section. But you will have the opportunity to purchase upgrades and weapons with your found loot. So far, I've been pretty kind to Chains of Fury, but the reality is this game is still an early work in progress, and I have to admit, this current demo build is pretty rough. For starters, it's very buggy. The physics can have a mind of their own, and one too many times a door would fail to go off of its hinges when kicked, sometimes trapping me. The enemy AI is not great. Baddies have a tendency to get stuck or trapped on the geometry, and sometimes they would fail to react to my presence, making them far too easy to wipe out. Plus, the performance was pretty shaky. One area in particular, the open prison, was prone to some harsh frame dips. Yeah, there's a lot of work ahead for this game. However, I do think it has potential, because, once again, the basic shooting mechanics feel good, the comic book art direction is looking slick, and the environmental mechanics, while buggy at the moment, hold a lot of promise for interesting gameplay. The ingredients are here, it's just a matter if they're cooked properly. As I said in the beginning, the Chains of Fury Kickstarter recently went live and so far the campaign is making great progress, with, at the time of this upload, over half of its goal funded. If you're interested, I do recommend checking out the campaign page. The developers detail their plans and goals extensively, plus backers are promised a bigger vertical slice demo that should be here sooner than later. If all goes according to plan, the developers are shooting to launch in the third quarter of 2022, and I wish them the best of luck. But what do you think of Chains of Fury. Is this one speaking to you? Yeah, be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications on future uploads. It's a few clicks for you, but a massive help for this channel. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.